What we're going to be looking at here is trading securities as a portfolio of stock securities and we're going to look at the adjusted fair value uh, and the unrealized holding gains or losses on this portfolio of, in stock securities in this example here. So what we have to do here at each reporting date here you report the trading securities at their fair value with any unrealized holding gains or losses reported as part of net income here and that would be exclusive of any interest or dividends here. The interest their dividends wouldn't be included in the fair value here. They have to be accounted for separately here. Okay, so let's look at our example here. Now, what we do here with these trading securities, remember those are securities that are being held as an investment by the company here, and they can be sold at any time. But what we would do here is we're going to look at two different years here. We're going to look at, and this is how you have to deal with these uh, trading securities here. We're going to be looking at reporting periods here, end of each year here. So we're going to be looking at uh, 12 1231x1 here and we're going to be comparing that here with 1231x2 here when we determine any adjustments that we have to make to our fair value here. So starting out with our first year here x1. Well what we would do here is we take our trading securities here and we're going to really be looking them as a total group here of securities and we're going to be comparing the um, cost of those securities here versus their fair value to determine any unrealized holding gains or losses. So what we're sitting here is those are the securities that haven't been sold here and that's what uh, because they haven't been sold there's going to be some unrealized gains or losses sitting in these securities here so for our first example uh, first year here we're going to have three different stocks that we're looking at here stock a B and C here and what you have to do in this case here is well we can look at them as the aggregate amount here we'll look at that here but let's just start out as an individual basis here so for stock a uh, we have a cost of forty thousand dollars on those stocks here and that would be what we paid for them. And now what you have to do at the end of each year, a reporting period, in this case it's the end of year X1 here, you have to determine their fair value. And let's assume that this is their market value here. Let's assume, let's say there were $38,000 here for stock A. The total market value is $38,000 here. Compare it to the cost, well the cost here is $40,000, so it dropped in value. So in this case we'd have the difference here gives us an unrealized loss here of $2,000. Now let's look at stock B here. Well, it had a cost here of 20000 fair value of 18000 So the difference again here, uh, fair value is less than its cost, so again we have a loss here of $2,000 on it. So that would be unrealized again here. And then let's look at stock C here. So a uh, cost of 40000 fair value went up here. It's more than the cost here, 41200 So in this case we're going to have an unrealized gain here of $1,200. Now, what we, we looked at on an individual basis, but we could have looked at them just as a group here. So the total cost here, uh, adding everything up here for our, the secured, our uh, stocks here, 100000 the fair value, 97200 So our fair value is less than our cost, so the net difference here would be $2,800 here. So that is going to be um, the unrealized, again, in this case, since it dropped in value, that would be an unrealized loss here in these securities. Okay, the total number of stocks here. Now, that and what we're doing in this example, we're not going to have any previous adjustments to our securities. We're just going to make it uh, simple here so we can understand what's going on. So here, for year end of year here, X1, we have an unrealized loss in this case on those securities that we're holding here of $2,800. Now let's go down and look at the end of year X2 here, 1231X2. So we're going to be looking at, again, you have to set up the securities, your, your, in this case our trading securities. In this case, what we're having here is we're going to have some differences here. Uh, stock B, uh, from what we had here in year X1 here, that is sold here. So that isn't going to be included in our securities here for our example. Now if we bought any extra securities we'd have to include them in here. But we're just for our example here we're going to now have stock A here, uh, only stock A we're holding in stock C here since stock B was uh, sold. That wouldn't be included in our uh, trading securities here. But again, we have to determine their cost here. And I'm just going to use the cost, a previous cost that we had on these securities here. And then we have to determine the fair value here. Now in this case, each end of each reporting period, you have to go out and you have to determine the fair value. In this case, if we do our comparison here, you're going to see some changes here. Stock A was 38000 Now it's new market price or fair value is 38000 
48,600. And then our stock C here, it was 41,200. Now it dropped to 41,000. So this is what we have to deal with each period here. You have to determine their fair value here at the end of the reporting period. So if we went um, just looking at our total amounts here at 4040, we come up with our total cost on the securities we're holding, those stocks A and C here for 80,000. And then their fair value, total fair value is 79,000. $600. So our unrealized in this case, again, we're going to have a loss here because our fair value of 79600 is less than the cost here. So we have a loss here of $400. Now, if you did, did a individual comparison here, you would have seen stock A here would have had a unrealized loss in this case of $1,400 here because of cost. Uh, a 40,000 is greater than its fair value here, 30, 38,600. And then stock C, you would have seen an unrealized or gain here of 1,000. Cost of 40,000, fair value here, 41,000. So what we do here now, just as if we went up here, uh, you just net out your amounts here. We have a $1,400 loss here, a $1,000 gain here, and you come up with a, 400, a net amount here, a $400 loss. Now, maybe I didn't mention that, but if we'd gone up here to our year X1 here, we would have had the same thing. $2,000 loss, and then for a, secure, uh, a here, and for B, a $2,000 loss, add it to the $1,200 gain, so a net a, a loss in this case was $2,800. Now, remember, that's unrealized. They haven't been sold here. Now, this is where we come into this. Uh, we have to make an adjustment here. So for the first year here, we didn't have to make an adjustment. We, we're going to record it as it is here. Our unrealized, in this case, loss at $2,800 because we didn't, we're, just for example, we didn't have any previous securities adjustment here. But for year X2 here, this is where we're going to have to determine our securities fair value adjustment here. And we're going to determine, okay, we're going to determine that to be tw a positive amount here of $2,400. Now, how did we come up with this $2,400 here? So uh, this is how you do it. And we'll look at how the calculations here. So you have to look at your previous securities adjustment here. And that was year X1 here. We had a uh, unrealized loss here of $2,800. So we would just bring that down here in our chart here, $2,800. And what we have to do is we have to now have an unrealized in loss here of $400. We were sitting with our previous amount here at $2,800. So now what we're going to come up with is our uh, adjustment here, at 20, a positive amount here, $2,400. So let's go and look at how we do that here. So this is going to be our fair value adjustment account. And we're going to look at how, where this fits in here as a valuation account to these trading securities. But just so you understand what's going on here with the arithmetic here, uh, what we have, this is our adjustment for each year here. So what we have here at the end of the first year here, X1, remember we had that uh, loss here on, uh, and it's going to be at the fair value adjustment here. That was that uh, unrealized loss here at $2,800. Now, what we have to come up with here for year X2, well, we have to have a total amount here, a net amount here of a $400 loss here, unrealized loss here. So that would be a credit amount here. So I didn't mention here the... Uh, the $2,800 loss here is a credit or it's a reduction here in our fair value adjustment here. And now for year X2 here, we're going to have to have a net amount here of $400 here as a fair our adjustment here as a credit or a reduction here, a unrealized loss here in this case. So the only way you can get that here is just go and you have to use your debit and credit amounts here. So we were sitting at 2800 and we have to come up with um, the balancing amount here. What we'd have to do is we'd have to debit or increase our fair value adjustment here by $2,400 to get that $400 uh, uh, unrealized loss here for your X2. So that's just a matter of your debits and credits here. You're sitting at um, uh, we have 2800 on X1. That was our balance here. We need 400 in our negative amount here, 400 in our, our unrealized loss here for year X2. And the only way you can get that here 
would be to increase your fair value adjustment securities trading account here by debit that here for $2,400. So you can see the arithmetic that goes on here. So yeah, just for example, if you were sitting, well, whatever, whatever you're sitting here, debits or credits, whatever, and you have to come up with the balance the uh, balancing amount here you really have to look at that previous whatever sitting at a previous amount here in your uh, fair value adjustment that you have here you have to look at the current period here and whatever it takes to get from the previous per, uh, uh, balance here to the current balance that has to be an adjustment that you make to this fair value adjustment account so that's the arithmetic that goes in here okay so now let's go and let's look how we record this here so Okay, here we're looking at our trading securities, the fair value adjustment here. So what you have when you have these trading securities here, uh, you have to set up a special uh, trading investment account here. And we're doing it uh, for this portfolio at its cost. So trading a securities account here, you do it at its cost here. So uh, we had a total cost here. Uh, first year here, 1231X1, we determined that to be $100,000. Okay, so now... What we do is we take this back, go back here a little bit. We go take this trading security, set that up as an account here on our balance sheet. Here, again, here, just re title it here, trading securities, and then for trading are, in this case, those stocks here. Then we have to have that fair value adjustment account, our fair value adjustment here for securities as trading. And this is what this account does here. It's a valuation account here. So any increases here in our security so this what this account does here any increases in this fair value adjustment directly increases our trading securities here and uh, true and if there's any decrease in this fair value adjustment it would decrease our trading securities uh, the cost amount here okay so that's our valuation account and then along with our fair value adjustment account we're going to have this is that going to be unrealized holding gain or loss here uh, on our income statement again that's going to be on our income statement here so let's just look go through our example here so we had those trading securities going back here we had that uh, initial amount here at 1231x1 we're looking at the first year here hundred thousand dollars worth now during the year here we sold off a uh, sec uh, stock B here and we sold it you have to record it at its cost here that was the stock that was sold here so we'd credit or reduce our trading securities here by twenty thousand dollars that was a cost here and then the balancing entries go into well the stock was sold for nineteen thousand dollars so we debit or increase our cash account here for nineteen thousand dollars that's for the stock sold and then the other debit the balancing amount here would be the loss on the sale here uh, debit that here for one thousand dollars because uh, we had a twenty thousand dollar cost we only received nineteen thousand for it so we've got the loss on the sale again that's on our income statement here for the trading securities a uh, one thousand dollars so you can see here from period to period you have to adjust your trading securities for any additions that you make or uh, extra stocks that you buy or any reductions here for any stocks that you sell okay so now let's look at this fair value adjustment here and we already got into that on our calculations here but for the first year here we calculated that to be a uh, loss here or it was an unrealized loss here at twenty eight hundred dollars so what we do for our fair value adjustment here you'd credit that here for that loss amount here at the end of the first year here twenty eight hundred dollars and then the debit amount here balancing amount would go into the unrealized gain or loss here on the income statement so the key is that any of these adjustments here when you're dealing with these trading securities here they have to be done in this um, adjustment account this fair value adjustment account they aren't done directly to the securities themselves we keep track of them in this adjustment account here for all those um, adjustments that we make here from period to period here and then for the adjustments that we make those are the unrealized it would be unrealized holding gains or losses here on our income statement. So we looked at that $2,800 uh, uh, fair value adjustment here reduction for the uh, that was unrealized loss in this case uh, credit here. So a debit goes into 20 uh, reduce our 
unrealized holding gain or loss here account on our income statement by $2,800. That was for the first year here. And then for that second year here, we calculated that uh, fair value adjustment here to be uh, $2,400. So we had to adjust our account up here, our trading securities account. We did it through the fair value adjustment account here, debit that here for $2,400, the end of the second year here. And then the credit would go to unrealized holding gain or loss. This We increased it here, our unrealized holding gain or loss here by $2,400. So what we look at this unrealized holding gain or loss, that's reported as other revenues here uh, as and gains here on our income statement. So these unrealized holdings gain and loss go to the income statement when we're dealing with these trading securities here. And they would be included in that income. And then this fair value uh, adjustment account, remember that's a valuation account that's tied into the uh, trading securities, the cost of those trading securities. So let's just look at it for the first year here uh, or for the current year here, year X2, so you can understand how this works. So what we had here sitting in these trading securities, well we had a hundred thousand dollar amount here but it was reduced because we sold off uh, that stock B here for twenty thousand dollars. So we have a net amount here in that account of $80,000 and then we made that fair value adjustment here uh, for year X2 here debit that or increase that here by $2,400 so add that that's a direct addition here to our trading securities account so add that in here and you're going to get our fair value here at the end of year X2 here at some amount here of $82,400 okay so that takes care of our trading securities here this fair value adjustment just remember here when you're dealing with those trading securities here you have to set up a special account and that would be the aggregate amount here the total amount goes into the um, increase uh, at its cost this is the cost of, of those trading securities and then each uh, reporting period you make those adjustments as we calculated here and then any adjustments to this fair value account any the balancing or the debits and the a balance here. If you've got a debit amount here, you're going to have to have a credit amount here, unrealized holding gain or loss on the income statement as income here, and any credits here would be uh, reductions here in the fair value here, get re a reduction here in unrealized holding uh, gain and loss here. So just look at your debits and credits here. And then the other thing is if you're selling any of those securities you have to reduce them at their cost here from your trading securities account and then you would recognize any cash or any receipts on those or whatever you had to pay for them if you were buying some and then you'd also recognize any gains or losses here on those trading securities so just remember that you set it keep your trading securities here their cost separated from the fair value adjustment that you have to make for each of those periods okay so that takes care of our example here on uh, trading securities with this fair value adjustment and how we'd handle that for recognizing any unrealized holding gains and losses and remember the unrealized holding gains and losses that's because those trading securities are sitting on our balance sheet they haven't been sold and that's what we'd have to recognize that uh, for whatever our tr total uh, trading securities would be for that period.